Hey, Dieter. Hi. No, wait, Dieter. Dieter. What did he run away for? That was weird. Looks like he left something on the bench. These must have fallen out of his pocket. Was that Tornade? That's the woman who that historian was calling about. Why would Dieter be carrying this around? What intrigues Mademoiselle this time? Well, let's see. Is this parrot very expensive? The price is very reasonable. 20 euro. How about if I pay 5 euros? Vendu. What else tickles the fancy? I really don't want to buy anything right now. Very well. Au revoir, Mademoiselle. Au revoir. they came in. Carefully. Don't kill any of them. Nothing good ever comes from killing things. Don't worry. I'll get them out of there for you. Bless you. Yuck. That must be the box they came in. Here, buggy, buggy, buggy. Working for a fashion designer was going to be glamorous. Wonder how all that red paint got there. Time's over, little guy. Poor girl. Too slow.
Dear Miss Minette, as you know, the books on the women of the French Resistance and uh, the exploits of Noisette Trenard, because she owned the windmill which you now own. This is from that historian who called before. Maybe she can help me figure out why Dita was carrying that obituary around. and these fonts look exactly like the ones that were used in one of those threatening notes Manette got. Which means Heather must have sent it. If I were an insect, where would I hide? Shoot, I missed! Buggy, buggy, buggy. Say good night, Gracie. There, that has got to be the last bug. Open the door now, Manette. Did you get all of the bugs? Yes, Manette. How many are there? I don't know, nine. Are they all alive? Yes, Manette. Are you sure you didn't kill any? Positive. And they're all in the box? Yes. Okay, listen. I want you to take that box to the park and let those things go. Only I don't want to be here when you come out. Probably the only thing those twisted little vermin are thinking about right now is revenge. Manette, they're cockroaches. Exactly! So I want you to count to ten, and then, and only then, are you to come out of there, all right? Anything you say. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. <sighs> what a nut job. Modern European history, Lynn Manrique. Hello, my name is Nancy Drew. I'm calling from Paris. Actually, I talked to you earlier when you tried to call Manette. She's finally calling me back? Wonderful! Please, put her on. Uh, I'd like to, but I'm afraid she's still too busy to talk to you. Oh. But if you don't mind, could I ask you a couple of questions about Noisette Tournade? Certainly. How long did she live in the Moulin, where Manette now has her studio? She lived there for 55 years, from 1949 to 2004. She sold it when she moved to Provence, which is where she passed away. She never married, you know. Very private person. She served as Paris's director of public works for more than 20 years, yet not one person has been able to tell me what her favorite color was. What did she do during the war? From 1942 until the liberation of Paris, Noisette worked as a translator for the Germans by day and an encoder for the French resistance by night. This, as you might imagine, made everyone suspicious of her, both French and Germans alike. And after the war, things got ugly. Especially when people found out she was romantically involved with a German soldier. His name was Hans. Hans von Schwesterkrank. 
You're kidding me. Was he by any chance related to Dieter von Schwesterkronk, the fashion photographer? I'm afraid I have no idea. Hans left Paris right after the war and never returned, leaving Noisette to fend for herself. She was tried as a collaborator in 1946 and acquitted, but the experience left her quite bitter. You see, some people said that during the war she took various pieces of artwork, mostly from churches, and stashed them away somewhere so they wouldn't fall into enemy hands. Were they recovered after the war? The artwork remains lost to this day. No one knows exactly what Noisette took, or if indeed she took anything. In any case, Noisette was terribly hurt that the city she loved had turned on her like that. After her trial, she told the press that the truth of what she'd done during the war resided in her and in the person and place she loved the most. And that was that. She never spoke of her wartime activities again. I assume that the person she was referring to was Hans von Svesterkronk, who passed away a year or two ago, and that the place was her beloved Moulin, which is why I'm hoping Manette will allow me to visit it. Now, I've got a question for you. In the hours before she died, Noisette was said to have constantly muttered three words. Red left green. Is there anything inside the Mulan that has to do with red left green? Anything at all? No, but I'll keep that in mind and let you know if I see something. I'd appreciate it. Any other questions? What was the French resistance? That was the name given to the various groups of men and women who did their best to undermine Germany's military occupation of France during World War II. Some would engage in strikes and sabotage, while others would collect and pass intelligence along to the Allies. Needless to say, their operations were highly covert and very dangerous. What else can you tell me about the German occupation of Paris? The German army entered Paris on June 14, 1940, and after France formally surrendered on June 22nd, the Germans controlled the city. They took whatever they wanted, food, supplies, houses, artwork, and dictated how Parisians were to live their lives. Naturally, their presence was deeply resented. Some people ignored the situation as best they could. Some collaborated with the Germans, while others, like those in the resistance, fought back until the city was finally liberated on August 25, 1944. After the war, when she was the director of public works, what kind of things did Moisette do? She oversaw many of the services which the citizens of Paris enjoyed every day. Streets, bridges, parks, their maintenance all came under Noisette's purview. She particularly enjoyed putting various forms of art on permanent display in various public places, especially parks. What's the story behind the Cross of Lorraine? The vertical bar crossed by two horizontal bars is an emblem that was first used by Joan of Arc, as well as the Dukes of Lorraine in the 15th century. But during and after World War II, it became a symbol of the French resistance. Nowadays, it's not unusual to see it on statues or monuments commemorating the period in French history from 1940 to 1945. What did you mean when you said Moisette was tried as a collaborator? Collaborators were French citizens who not only failed to resist the occupation, but actually helped the Germans keep it going. Because Moisette had worked for the Germans as a translator and had a German boyfriend, after the war, many of her countrymen automatically accused her of collaboration. When it was revealed that she had been a member of the resistance, instead of exonerating her, that just made some people think she'd been spying for the Germans, too. As I said before, it was an ugly time, one which poor Noisette spent the rest of her life trying to forget. I really appreciate your help. My pleasure. Bye. <laughs> Bonjour. No! Nancy! George, go get on the other line, quick. It's Nancy. And remember, talk fast. She's calling all the way from France. So where are you? What have you seen? How do you like Paris? What's Minette like? Have you learned how to design clothes? Beth, slow down. You don't have to talk fast, okay? My dad bought me a phone card and told me to make as many calls as I want. Oh, great. Hi, Nance. What's going on? How's Paris? Have you seen the Louvre? What about the Eiffel Tower? How many famous people George, are you? George, three words. Prepaid phone card. Oh, great. 
Hey, perfect timing. We were just about to go for a run. Whoa, wait a minute. A run jog? I meant jog. But you said run. I meant jog. You know how I feel about the R word, George. Jog. We're going for a jog, Bess. Honest. So, Nance, tell us about Minette. Well, she's very high-strung. Why do you say that? Well, the first time I walked into her office, I was almost decapitated by the potted plant she'd just thrown. She threw a potted plant at you? Before she even knew you? That was rude. Actually, she was throwing it at Heather, her assistant. Oh, and Bess, according to Minette, when something is cool, she says it's totally rude. Rude. You know, that's got a ring to it. He is one rude dude. Yeah, I like it. I'm going to start saying that. I told you guys before I left that I'd be rooming with Jing Jing Ling, right? You mean, you really are? Yes. We thought you were kidding. What's she like? Well... In order to work for Manette, she needs to gain a little weight, so she's constantly making cookies for herself. What? Models can't eat cookies. That goes against the laws of nature. JJ can. In fact, she has to. She's a couple pounds shy of being the perfect size 12 that Manette needs. But that's not fair. All this time thinking that I could eat cookies and models couldn't is the only way I could feel superior to them. You just totally destroyed my self-image. Well, look at it this way. Jing Jing Ling eats cookies. Jing Jing Ling is a model. Bess Marvin eats cookies. Ergo, Bess Marvin is a model. Or could be a model. You know, in some parallel universe type thing. Nice try, George. I took this very strange phone call from Annette. At least I tried to. What was so strange about it? The guy wouldn't give me his name, and he sounded very hostile. And he had a German accent. And, not long after that, some unknown person sent Minette a box of cockroaches. Ew, yuck. Tell me about it. They got loose all over her office, and she made me find them and put them back in the box. Double yuck. Did any kind of note come with them? Nope. Sending anonymous letters is one thing, but sending live vermin? Sounds to me like things are getting personal. Yeah, let's just hope they don't start to get deadly. It turns out that one of the threatening letters Manette got was sent by none other than her own assistant, Heather McKay. You're kidding. Why would she do that? I have no idea. Guess I'm going to have to ask her. Just be careful. Maybe Manette's flakiness is contagious. The windmill Manette works out of was once owned by a woman named Noisette Tornade, who used to be a resistance fighter during World War II. Was it like her headquarters or something? According to this historian in the States who's doing research on her, she lived there for some 50 years after the war, and she's rumored to have been involved in the theft of artwork that's been missing since the war, and... There's more? And a certain young German fashion photographer who used to date Minette has been carrying around the woman's obituary. Why? I don't know. Yet. yet. Well, I'll let you guys go. Have fun. Amusez-vous bien. Show off. Okay guys, end of the line, you are out of here.